The rest of the story. The Constitution of the United States of America did not just happen. Well, this is the rest of the story. As the guns of the revolution fell silent and the smoke cleared, what remained was a lukewarm alliance of 13 states, inadequately governed by a document called the Articles of Confederation. So divergent were the interests of the states, so unstable was our western frontier, that many doubted our ability to keep on keeping on. We had beaten the British, but could we survive ourselves? In 1786, State representatives met in Annapolis, Maryland, to discuss the difficulties of interstate commerce. Nothing much was agreed upon except that another meeting would be necessary, and so in the autumn of that year, the states were invited to send delegates to Philadelphia to take into consideration the situation of the United States. It was this congregation which Thomas Jefferson, then United States Minister to France, which he would refer to as an assembly of demigods, compliment intended, the history books would call it simply the United States Constitutional Convention, for it was there and then that our Constitution was born. Or was it really? For although James Madison is widely recognized as the father of the Constitution, and he was in fact its principal architect, it must be remembered that he was a student of world governments, and he was admittedly influenced by other systems of social order. He was a copycat. You see, until we came along, there was once upon a time a one-of-a-kind republic on this planet, a confederacy of democratic sovereign states which voluntarily had delegated certain broad prerogatives of sovereignty to a federal government. And those prerogatives were defined and limited by a constitution. And Ben Franklin studied it and thought that was a good idea. He was particularly impressed by their document. He admired those who had created it. He once wrote in effect that if they could do so, so could we. Franklin had been studying their form of government for decades. They had a three-chambered parliament, which now bears striking resemblance to our Senate and House and Supreme Court. Among the modern concepts of democratic rule established by this other republic, the one that we ultimately were to copy, were wide representative elections, senatorial plurality, absence of hereditary sovereigns, and of course the basic freedoms, notably unilateral freedom of religion. Thomas Jefferson was another admirer of that system, of that equitable, ingenious constitution. Many scholars have suggested that this other republic was the intellectual progenitor of the United States of America. Well, it certainly is obvious that our Constitution is patterned after theirs, however inadvertently, for they had demonstrated in advance that this kind of freedom with responsibility was the best way to ensure orderly rule. And the remarkably similar republic to which I refer predated ours by 300 years. It was the League of Iroquois Nations. That's right. It was the Indians who taught us about freedom. Now you know the rest of the story.